So obviously, one of the most talked about things in bowling for the last six months at this point has been ball testing and approval. Well, what's it all about? Let's find out. There, the ball testing actually all happens in the, the ball and pin testing right there. So, uh, I just kind of want to, just kind of want to see it, honestly. All right. So this is Jason Milligan. He's Hi, Jason. Hello. Head, you know, research technician. He handles a lot of the approval testing for, for bowling balls as well as other products uh, that we approve. Um, but Jason, do you want to give him kind of a walkthrough of the approval process for bowling balls? like? We just talked about they've come in for shipping, sure. right? And they'll get trucked over here. And and, and what, what what are the steps in the process yeah. of improving the bowling ball? Sure. So first thing they would do is they would sit in this room for at least a day to, to acclimate, most likely overnight, right? Because mm -hmm. we're in the middle of Texas. So they could come in if they're on a truck. If it's the wintertime, they're not going to be very warm. Mm -hmm. If it's the summertime, they're not going to be very cold. So we want to let them have ad adequate time to go ahead and and acclimate to the room temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, the device you see over here would be where we would start. Once we get everything checked in, we would record serial numbers. Uh, we would record their weights. We would get all that stuff put onto the box. Mm -hmm. And then we'd start our testing here. This is our COR device, coefficient of restitution. And what we have here is we would have the ball come down the ramp and hit this pin, okay? There's four sensors in here. They're gonna record the speed of the ball as it passes through before and after contact and the speed of the pin after contact and there's a nice little mathematical equation that turns that into a coefficient of restitution number. Mm -hmm. It's basically telling you how much energy transfer there is to the bowling ball to the bowling pin. Mm -hmm. okay? I mentioned the scale. Uh, we have a, a gross weight scale we use here. It's just like a baker scale. We'd pull that off and get total weight of the ball. But with this device, we can actually get the top weight of it. So we're measuring the heaviest portion of the ball versus the bottom of the ball, right? Mm -hmm. So the opposite sides, how much how much difference there is in, in that heaviest part of the ball, how many ounces are different. We do have a specification on top weight now, they can't have more than five ounces. So oh. this gives us a pretty accurate reading. If we do find something that's closer to that five ounce range, we can go ahead and use a regular dodo scale. Uh, that's just a beam scale yep. like they would normally use in a pro shop. We would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we would just verify the results, all we would do. But the ultimate is much quicker to use, so we do that for our approval process, if that makes sense. And we would use this star at micrometer. Mm -hmm. This is an A50. So we're measuring the diameter of the ball this way. Mm -hmm. okay. It's got to be under 8595. We'd put the ball onto this gauge here. So around this gauge, it just takes the ball and slides it underneath this, this readout. Mm -hmm. This is dial indicator is all it is. So as you rotate the ball around, it's going to give you that any difference in raising and height would be the difference in the roundness of it. So mm -hmm. what that's going to do is it's going to give you a total run out or how, how much difference there is in the roundness between the minimum and the maximum. Mm -hmm. okay. We then we'll come over here to our durometer. We we'll use our durometer to check 10 spots around the ball. Those 10 spots we get average and that would give you the hardness of the ball. Mm -hmm. um, prior to doing the hardness, we would check temperature, which is the temperature gun. Mm -hmm. Just making sure they're within the range. Mm -hmm. Again, that's why we leave them in here overnight is so they acclimate. Yep. Okay. yep. We then go to our RG swings. Um, okay. This is where you get that, you know, the RG is two, four, seven, eight, uh, differential is 055. So where you get that from is from the low and the high um, RG axis of the bowling ball. Okay. Uh, from there, we would sand the balls and prep them for surface roughness. They would come here uh, to our sanding machine. Um, this is called a sure spin made by Powerhouse. What we have here is we have three pads. Well, uh, we have the three motors numbered. And the reason that we have them numbered is we actually cycle the pads through, okay? So mm -hmm. the best, the, the most consistent way we found to get the surface the same on every ball, regardless of what we do, is we use one fresh pad, one pad that's been used once, and one pad that's been used twice on every ball. Yeah. And then once we cycle it through, the three use pad goes into the bucket. We cycle these around and the fresh one goes on. Gotcha. Okay, so that way we're keeping the same surface all the way through no matter uh -huh. what. Mm -hmm. And then they would go through the sanding process then come here to our profilometers. And these are basically like a super large record player needle. So it's drug across the surface and detects the microscopic differences in the peaks and valleys and how far apart those peaks and valleys are. We would do 15 spots on the ball and record an average for that. Mm -hmm. So we then go over here to friction, and this this sled would, would just clamp a ball into that, and we're dragging the ball across a dry lane panel. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we're doing that. We have a forced gauge on here that gives us how much force is being exerted onto mm -hmm. that gauge, mm -hmm. and we use a percentage of that to give us our friction factor. Okay. Okay. And then from there, they would go to oil absorption. Um, we would go to our dispenser here dispenses a measured amount of oil. We would put three drops on the ball. 
we slide the ball underneath the cameras to record the time. Mm -hmm. and once it's gone away, we can go back through our DVR system and record the starting and end times. So this is going to be when it's first been dropped on and it's slid underneath the camera, right? Okay. So if I kind of speed it up here, yeah. Uh, here's a sliding under. So there's a starting oil drop right there. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then we would record the start time from the click of the, this pedal is what actually dispenses the oil here. So when we step on that, we record that time into an Excel sheet. Oh, sure. Yep. And then we would come back in here and we could actually go back through and, and watch that oil drop disappear as we go through. <laughs> See how it's going away mm -hmm. there? Once it, dis once it disappears completely, we record that time. So with the starting and end time, you can calculate total time for oil absorption. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, through the whole process, yeah. like let's say we fail at point one. Yep. Are we do we do do we do them all or we would continue you do the testing? Yes, we do. Uh, the, the whole process takes about five to six hours for two samples. So whenever we receive the samples of bowling balls, we'll receive two to start with of each one. Yep. Whether it's a 14 and a 15 or a 15 and a 16, mm -hmm. they would come in, they would go through the entire process. Even if we see something that does fail, we would continue it through. We would just alert the manufacturer that we have an issue. Okay, okay. gotcha. Now, some tests, they w the test results could end up in an area where we need to have more samples, whether it's really close to our limit for oil absorption time or for uh, radius gyration or for differential, we may have to require eight more samples of that one weight. Mm -hmm. um, through that test, we may even need to require another 24 samples of a certain weight. Mm -hmm. So it's just a way to verify that, hey, what you're making is going to be within our limits and be good to go. Yeah, for sure. And for then sure. Once, they're, once they're through here, um, we box them up and keep them for a while. Um, normally, they don't go back to the manufacturers. They just don't want them back. Yeah. So then we end up donate them back out to this program or whatever. Um, but then from here, once they get the approval and they're good to go, uh, quarterly we'll go out and we'll spot check. Mm -hmm. So we'll go out to the distributor and grab bowling balls that have been out for a little while and bring them back in and run them through anything that might be close. You know, one of the things that I think publicly people don't give enough credit to when I pay my $20 sanction fee a year is what happens in this room. And, and this is just so, the bowling balls, right? I mean, we right. do it for bowling pins, we do it for lane panels, mm -hmm. we do it for cleaners, we do it for conditioners, we do it for um, different pit-in products, right? Mm -hmm. um, I said bowling pins already. I mean, it just depends on what it is, and there's other research going on as well. So it's not just approving the products, but yeah. it's what do those approval tests mean to the game? You mm -hmm. know? Well, all the work we did on no balance holes, all the work we did on oil absorption, all the work we did on what does this mean for performance, right? Mm -hmm. All the ball hardness testing we've done and, and research we've done on that with urethane balls, all that stuff goes along with this. Yeah. So we stay pretty busy. I mean, there's really only five of us. So We, we forgot the test. We do all the analysis. Tom does the analysis. He runs it by our expert who verifies that we did it right. Mm -hmm. um, we take it back to the committee who ultimately makes all the decisions on um, new specifications and, and whatnot. Once the specs in the manual, it's written up. It's his job, it's our job to see if everything passed. Okay. And like yep. we said, the big thing we do is as you get close to a spec limit, no matter what it is, mm -hmm. we get additional balls in. <clears throat> we test eight additional, like he said, or 24. And we use the stats, you know, we figure out the bell curve and calculate where are you or, you know, are you making the balls or outside specs, but we didn't get them in. But, you know, but based on his stats, you know, are, are you close to the limit? And then, mm -hmm. you know, that's why we keep adding more and more as we see that you're going to get, you get awful close to this limit here. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, and so, yeah, pretty good feel with the 24 and yeah. the potential 32 balls of mm -hmm. what they're able to do in their production line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure around 300 325 approvals a year so think about that's one a day yep so he's got he's doing a ball a day mm -hmm. <laughs> or a, approval a, yeah. in five hours mm -hmm. that doesn't count Ooh, this was close get eight more of those in. Yep. right Ooh, now there's 24 you know um well, what in your spare time go test oil right and go test lane panels right. go you know, so, yeah uh, yeah as you can tell it's a full time it adds up yeah there, for sure two technicians mm -hmm. and another one that that do physically do all the testing for us. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, we're constantly doing research to try to do things better, right? So we talked about how this uh, COR device you know, measures the coefficient of the ball to the pin, right? Well, that has some issues uh, with longevity as far as things wearing down and mm -hmm. need to be replaced. We've had cases where we have a pin no longer, a pin gets broken. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you have to replace your standard pin. So you have to do testing to find a pin that was close to where you were before. So mm -hmm. it's got some issues where 
uh, our standard ball we test pens with is an LT48, right? Old school <laughs> rubber, right? And it's been tried and true for a very long time. Uh, but our pins kind of been broken throughout uh, a period of time and, and we've had to replace it a couple times. So we're looking at a more standardized way to measure COR on balls and pins by using a, a third material, uh, these, these ball bearings, mm -hmm. right? And actually, you know, measuring the recoil of a ball bearing. We've, we already know that some manufacturers use a similar test mm -hmm. uh, just from talking with them. So, uh, you know, we're looking at ways to make it better. Cool. And, uh, we've built two of them because we want to know if we build two of them, are they the same, <laughs> right? Or if we buy, you know, a dozen of these steel ball bearings, how varied are they? You know? yep. This is all research that goes into it. Like anytime we, we developed the oil absorption spec, we were researching oil absorption for probably two years before we came out mm. with that specification because mm -hmm. we had to see what oil are we going to use? Mm -hmm. and does that matter? You know, does ball surface matter? How do we know that the next gallon of oil is the same as the first gallon mm -hmm. of oil we started all the specs with? So really a lot of research goes into all these things. So uh, this is very much still in the data collection phase. We're collecting data on these devices with every approval sample that goes through. We've got about 100, maybe 200 approval samples somewhere in that window that have come in and been tested on this device and that device. So we can gather data of what's the difference in COR with this test versus that test. Mm -hmm. And ultimately present all that to the committee uh, and whether or not it needs to adjust the specification to adopt it, all of that will be decided by the committee. So mm -hmm. you do all that work, you make this nice new device that, that does what it's supposed to do and then ultimately that, we might scratch that and have to come, come up with a different one. Yep. But ultimately we want something that's more repeatable and more standardized for long term with less changes or less things that can break and wear down. Mm -hmm. That's what we're working on with this. This is full store. Yep. You can see we've got a, a string pin <clears throat> set around here. Yep. That's been a lot of my life for the last year and a half or so. <laughs> uh, well, it was going, it was, when did we start thinking about November of the pandemic, about 2020. That's when you got we started. We got, got the first machines in, and we, you know, did a mock league out here on them with with uh, bowlers in the area, and we did uh, bowl score testing and rural testing and all kinds of testing. You know, about a year's worth of research, we got to the committee, and you know, we're moving forward with this concept of can we certify them but keep them separate until we know even more. Yep. Um, so yep. This wave of testing, they've added a new insert for the pins to kind of remove, to return some of the mass that the, that the hole takes out. What we found is the pins fail some of our pin regulations once you drill the holes into them. Oh, sure, yep. So they've come up with a few different insert designs where the string will hold it in, adds that weight back to the pin. So now mm -hmm. all these pins meet spec with their insert in them. So cool. We're gonna run them back through bowl score testing, back through um, earl testing, and, and even have some bowlers bowl on them. Outside of that, we made some preliminary specs about how far back these these stops need to be, or where you can put your curtain. Mm -hmm. uh, because when we were shooting at spares with earl, we found that because there's no moving carpet and because you know there's strings pulling the pins back. It was much easier to say bounce a pin out of the pit than you might experience on free fall machines. So mm -hmm. moving this back a little bit further, having the right kind of curtain set up and making sure the strings have enough slack are our three major um, specifications to say, hey, we need to try to keep these pins from bouncing out. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna run them back through a, a condensed version of the testing we did. Mm -hmm. uh, we think we'll get through each machine in about five to six weeks of testing. And uh, yeah, if, as long as we don't see anything new, uh, we're going to be proposing to, you know, continue along the process of certifying them separate. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. just kind of our last final check to, you know, get another look at these machines, make sure the changes did what we anticipated, and yeah, make sure it's ready to go. That's super cool. So, uh, EARL stands for the Enhanced Automated Robotic Launcher, for those that don't know, but it's also an homage to EARL Anthony. Mm -hmm. uh, which was sometimes referred to as the machine, right? <laughs> so, this is the machine, we call him Earl. Uh, Earl is our staff ball tester. Uh, he's also pretty versatile. He can throw bowling balls anywhere from 10 to 25 miles an hour. And he can have an RPM or a rev rate of anything from zero to 900 RPM. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, that's or unnecessary. Speed, speed's not necessarily superhuman, right? A pro throwing a straight shot yeah. as fast as you can, they can get into 30 miles an yeah. hour, right? Yep. But they don't have a 1,000-pound arm to have to stop 
And, That's true. You know, they get an approach and some other things. And also, <laughs> ain't nobody putting 900 on it. Right. <laughs> Not yet. Not Nine, yet. <laughs> 900 is pretty superhuman. I wonder if, like, you know, a pro could do it with, like, a eight-pound ball, though. God, I don't know. You know so, I, 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 That's <laughs> so fast. <laughs> But, but yeah, so uh, he can also pick up the ball on you know any axis we want mm -hmm. by controlling either the grip center or where we tell him the PAP is. And he can take that axis and give it anywhere from zero to 90 degrees of rotation. So end over end to spiral pass. And he can have anywhere from zero to 45 degrees of tilt. So, okay. So very varied in his mm -hmm. release parameters. Mm -hmm. He gives us an objective, you know, bowler to apply to any sort of performance study for balls or lane oils or patterns or lane panels or topography or you know whatever we might want to study that involves performance he mm -hmm. gives us somebody that shows up every day never gets sick can throw the ball like an, a joe bowler at league or mm -hmm. you know top professional and be mm -hmm. consistent in lots of different ways mm -hmm. so uh, his main purpose is research projects okay right so if we were to do a research project for any new spec or any new a change to the current specs, we definitely have a portion of data that was collected by using URL. Cool. But we try to have as many, you know, data sources as possible, like the string pin setters. We want URL data source, we want bull score data source, we want bowler feedback data source, mm -hmm. we want you know, we want a lot of sources of data. Hopefully they all say the same things, lead us in the same direction, mm -hmm. get us to as good decisions as we can. Mm -hmm.